Hi everyone, this is Tetsu and this time we'll take a look at the ship scene that comes with Phoenix FD 2.2. We'll build the scene from scratch, we'll start with setting up the units, the dimensions and the speed of the ship and once we have that we'll create the Phoenix simulator and we'll start adding the nice stuff which will be the foam and the splashes and at the end I'll show you how I rendered this. So let's start. One of the first and most important things that a lot of people get confused with is the unit setup. And people often ask uh, which are the right system units that they should use and uh, actually there is no such thing as right units. Because if you think about it, I live in Europe so I'm used to the metric system. And it's easy for me to work with meters but if you're located in let's say UK you're probably used to the imperial units and in such case it will be easier to work with uh, feet instead of meters. So what's important to remember is that not the units but the size of the object is what matters uh, when you do simulations. So if you have a ship that is 150 meters long that's correct and if you have a ship that is 430 feet long that's correct also but uh, if you have a ship that is 1000 meters long or 3280 feet long uh, that's wrong and uh, Phoenix is designed to work with real sizes and when you have the wrong sizes you struggle a lot so keep in mind that when you create your scenes make sure that the objects that you put inside the simulator have the right size and you'll see how much easier it is to work that way so let's take a look at the current system units and uh, as opposed to the sample scene where one unit uh, equals to 20 centimeters uh, that's in the sample scene uh, here I changed uh, one unit to equal to one meter uh, just for simplicity and uh, you'll see that because the ship has the right size in both scenes uh, the difference in these units here won't affect the simulation at all so uh, we'll see this later and for now I'll just click OK to close that and I also made uh, the size of the home grid uh, a little bigger so uh, I've come here to the grid and snap settings and here under the home grid I've changed uh, the grid spacing to 10 meters so that uh, I can see it in the viewport and for the size of the ship that is so important I searched the web and used that page as a reference and uh, here they give the length which is uh, 154 meters and uh, the beam which is uh, 20 meters so I've created a box to get the dimensions inside the scene and uh, this is the box with a length of uh, 154 meters and width of 20 meters and uh, I made sure that uh, the ship fits uh, inside uh, that box to get the proper dimensions and uh, I then just uh, hit the box because I don't need it anymore and I'll animate the ship now so I'll turn on the auto key select the ship I'll move it on the Y axis so let's say it starts from minus 200 and at frame 1000 it goes to 200 on the Y again so it travels a distance of uh, 400 meters uh, in 1000 frames and uh, by knowing these two values I can find out the speed of the ship so I'll use a calculator and I'll divide the uh, frame range which is uh, 1000 frames divided by 30 because uh, I am at uh, 30 frames per second so 100 divided by 30 results in 33 seconds and uh, if I take the distance that the ship travels which is uh, 400 meters divided by 33 seconds gives me 12 meters per second and uh, to get a better idea I'll convert this to kilometers so 12 meters per second to kilometers per hour that makes uh, 43 kilometers per hour and if I open up the reference page the speed here is uh, about uh, 56 kilometers per hour so we are a bit slower but uh, I'll leave that and uh, I'll open the curve editor select the Y position the one that we just animated select these two keys and uh, set uh, them to linear so that uh, the ship travels with a constant speed and I'll just uh, clean these two guys by selecting the keys and press delete 
we don't need those. We will need a simulator, however, so I'll create one now. Here in the create menu, standard primitives, Phoenix FD, and here's the Phoenix simulator button. So instead of creating one big simulator covering the whole route of the ship, something like this, I can make this simulator much smaller and uh, make it covering only the area around the ship. So I'll go in here and shrink it on the X and also on the Y and let's move this back and notice that I am not centering the simulator to the ship like this because I don't need to simulate this uh, empty area at the front because uh, nothing happens there and instead I want to pull this back and uh, have this area here simulated because uh, I have some nice waves that will be created at the back of the ship and uh, I want to leave room for, for them. So I'll set this uh, a little back and uh, I can also decrease the size on the Z uh, because I don't need to have uh, all the bottom part of the ship inside the simulator. So I'll set this to half of uh, what is it now? So 8 and uh, I'll move the simulator up to make sure that uh, I capture uh, the waves at the front. So I can move it a little bit more, maybe less. And yeah, so that's the, the simulator. And if I scrub the timeline, you can see that the ship is traveling, but the simulator stays in place. That's because they're not linked uh, together right now. So I can just uh, use the select and link and link the simulator to the ship and now they are moving together. This is a pretty neat workflow because uh, now with the smaller simulator I can have a better detail in less time. And uh, don't forget in order for this uh, setup to work you have to make sure that uh, the inertial forces in the dynamics are turned on and uh, they are turned on by default but uh, make sure that uh, this checkbox is uh, checked. I'll increase the resolution to about a million for now and I'll also enable the liquids and the initial fill up which I'll use to fill the container with liquid uh, to a certain level and uh, I can again take a look at this page here to check the draft and uh, the draft is 9.4 meters so I'll create a box to get an idea of these 9.4 meters and let's take a look at the left view and uh, what the draft is it uh, this is the vertical distance between the water line and the bottom of the hole so uh, you can imagine that this is the bottom of the hole and uh, the water line should be somewhere here where the paint border is actually so I'll delete this and now I know that my initial fill up should be somewhere around the paint border. So let's select the simulator and try it with the default of 50%. So hit start, switch to the left view and uh, this is a bit too much now. So let's set it to something lower like 40 and try again. Okay this is better. So let's switch the preview to mesh. I'll turn off the all the other that I'm not using it now and switch this to mesh and I will also go here to the rendering and switch the mode to ocean. This pop-up appears where Phoenix recommends to uh, use the static default geometry uh, when rendering the ocean and uh, it will set it up for us so hit yes. I will also set the ocean level to 40 as the initial fill up and let's see what we have. I'll pause this for now because I don't like the wave uh, here at uh, the back. To make it more interesting I'll unhide a box that I have prepared and uh, it's this one here under the liquid 
and uh, I'll use this together with the liquid source to uh, create some uh, nice uh, waves at the back here. So let's create the uh, liquid source. So here to the helpers, Phoenix FD and pick the Phoenix liquid source. And I'll give this a blue color and switch back to gray again. And here, click the add button and pick the box. I'll set the discharge to 14 and also the polygon ID to 1 so that we only emit from this uh, front face here. And uh, all these uh, other faces are ID 2 and only the front one is uh, ID 1. Okay. So my frame here is 55, so I'll simulate now to frame 54 so that we can compare the two frames and uh, hit start again. While this is simulating, I'll create a standard material for the mesh to be able to see it better because right now it's a little too dark for me. So I'll call this standard, change the diffuse. OK and apply the material. OK, so it's done and uh, this is with the uh, liquid source uh, at the bottom and uh, this was the previous result without uh, the liquid source. And uh, you can see it's definitely more interesting now at the back and uh, also some nice splashes will be created here. OK, so now I think I can come back here and uh, increase the resolution. I want it to be somewhere at around 50 million. So let's try with 0 0.28. Okay. And uh, here in the dynamics, uh, I want to make sure that the conservation method is uh, symmetric. And uh, the symmetric is preferred for oceans and especially in uh, this type of simulations because I want to have uh, the waves that uh, are generated at the front here to be relatively same on both sides and um, the smooth uh, conservation for example can uh, produce um, waves that are very different from uh, one another on the both sides so we'll use the uh, symmetric and uh, I will also increase the quality from 30 to 50 because uh, in some cases the uh, waves uh, might uh, reach the end of the simulator and uh, later when we add foam it, it stays like it's cut off here and uh, it's really easy to notice uh, when you render it uh, with the ocean. So here is uh, one of the previous uh, simulations that I did earlier and uh, you can see this is exactly what happens with the uh, quality of 30. So by increasing it to 50 this shouldn't be the case anymore. I'll leave this to 50. I'll also set the steps per frame to 4 uh, because the ship is uh, moving uh, relatively fast. And uh, I'll rerun the sim now. Okay, so I paused the sim at uh, frame 600 because I am pretty happy with the result so far. Uh, I have some nice detail with uh, the 50 million cells. And uh, here's the viewport uh, preview. You can see there are some nice uh, cutting in the waves at the front and uh, also I uh, like how the waves attenuate before they reach the uh, borders of the simulator and uh, I think we are ready now to get to the fun part where we will add the foam and the splashes so close that and uh, select the simulator I'll enable the splashes by clicking the enable button and uh, Phoenix offers uh, to create a shader for me, so I'll press yes. At first I'll just uh, set the rate to 1 for the uh, basic setup and uh, then I'll increase it. I'll create the foam from the splashes by setting the foam on heat amount to 1. And uh, when I create scenes uh, where I have uh, both foam and splashes, I always like to create the foam that way. Uh, because it makes sense and uh, in this case when the splashes hit the ocean they'll create the foam there and uh, that's uh, really nice to have. 
I should enable the phone now from its own tab and uh, Phoenix will create another shader for us but uh, this time for the phone and uh, I'll just move it closer to the other one and here in the phone tab I will just uh, set the rate to zero to make sure that uh, no foam will be created directly so that uh, now only the splashes create the foam. I'll decrease the resolution now for the setup stage. Okay, 1.5 million uh, will give a nice fast uh, simulation times and uh, let's press start. And uh, I'll turn off the mesh from the preview. Instead, I will enable the foam and the splashes preview. So, foam and splash. I'll pause now and uh, get back when I have some result. The, the first thing that I notice is that uh, the foam is not living outside the simulator. So, I will give it uh, some outside life. Here in the outside life, I'll set this to 20, uh, which means 20 seconds, and uh, this will be more than enough. I will also give some outside life for the splashes uh, in case uh, some of the splash particles reaches the end of the simulator. So here are the outside life, I'll set it to 4. I don't think they will reach the end of the simulator but just in case. So you can see now the foam lives outside the simulator. Now the foam flies too high, so I'll decrease the uh, rise speed quite a bit. And uh, I will also decrease the falling speed. The falling speed actually works as a drag force, which will be applied to the particles. And uh, that will keep them uh, down here in the simulator. I can also increase the air friction of the splashes, and uh, I'll increase it quite a bit. Uh, because when you have bigger splashes, uh, like in this case, it's a good idea to increase the air friction because you can end up with a single particle shooting up or uh, flying too high around the base particles. And uh, we want to keep them down there where the waves are. So that's why we'll set this uh, to 100. Okay, so uh, we are almost at uh, frame 250. And uh, what I noticed is that the size of the bubbles is uh, too much. And you can see these bubbles are uh, very big. And here at the front also. And when you compare this to the size of, uh, size of the ship, it uh, looks strange. So uh, you can see that uh, the size of a bubble right now is uh, 30 centimeters, which is uh, uh, a lot. So I'll set this to 0 0.03 which means uh, 3 centimeters and uh, I'll lift up the size of the big bubble slightly by increasing the variation up and also I'll increase slightly the distribution so that uh, I have less of the of those uh, bigger bubbles and let's take a look at the size of the splashes here I think I'll only increase the variation up because uh, variation in the size is always a good thing and uh, yeah, that's it for the size. There are the foam particles now with the smaller size. The one thing I can do now is uh, I will decrease the bubble to bubble interaction uh, because the size of the bubbles is big enough to make them stick together and uh, I don't need it to be so strong. So I'll set this to 200. By setting it uh, to a lower value, uh, I will make the simulation uh, run a little bit faster because the bubble to bubble is an expensive effect to simulate because you have to process the particles individually. And uh, let's uh, create the patterns. They will add some nice detail here at the front and uh, at the back also. So uh, I'll set the strength to 1 because I want them to form in less time. And uh, for the size, uh, 10 will be too much considering that the ship is around 150 meters. And uh, the reference images that I've uh, found, uh, this one here, uh, you can see the patterns are uh, quite small compared uh, to the ship. And uh, these guys here. 
and uh, here's the other reference you can see these uh, tiny little uh, patterns so uh, a size of 100 of the ship will be okay I think so I'll set this to 1.6 and uh, I'll let this um, simulate to give it a time to form the patterns and uh, I'll see you again the patterns uh, started to form uh, if I pause this for a second and uh, scrub the timeline you can see that as the ship moves forward it uh, leaves the foam and the foam uh, starts uh, to form the uh, patterns and you can see this behavior here you can see how the foam is pushed away and starts to create the patterns this will be more visible when we increase the resolution and uh, for now I think I can uh, decrease the uh, half-life because right now the foam seems uh, to live forever and uh, I will set this to 0 0.5 and find the frame where I can restore okay so here is a frame that uh, you can uh, restore the simulation so I'll hit stop and uh, restore with uh, the new half-life and see how this will affect the whole thing the half-life of the foam did its job and uh, now the particles are dying off earlier and uh, they never reach the back end of the ship anymore uh, I like that so I'll keep the half-life to 0 0.5 and uh, this is the whole scene that we've uh, gone through to prepare the settings for the high-res one and uh, this is what we've had before uh, actually increasing the resolution I will set the rate of the splashes to 10 to create uh, more particles and uh, I've done some tests before with higher resolution and uh, I found that uh, birth rate of 10 will give me enough particle count somewhere at about 3 million I will also increase the threshold to 20 uh, which will create the splashes only at the areas where the waves are forming and uh, then crashing I will also export the velocity channel for the splashes so that uh, I can render them with a motion blur later and uh, I'll jump here to the grid again and uh, turn back the resolution up to what we've had before okay so 51 million I'll hit start and uh, wait for the whole scene to finish and uh, then we will take a look at the rendering and uh, the scene finished it uh, simulated for 22 hours for uh, 1000 frames so a lot of frames to simulate there but uh, the waiting totally worth it and uh, I'll show you the viewport preview to see the result so here it is you can see this plush is created at the front of the ship and uh, they uh, nicely attenuate before they reach the end of the borders of the simulator and uh, you can also see the foam is nicely spread on both sides of the ship thanks to the symmetric conservation uh, we also have some nice detail in the patterns and also I like the uh, backside where the uh, waves are created so I'll jump back to the scene now let's create some waves before we start with the rendering so I'll select the simulator and go here to the rendering tab and enable the displacement and uh, I'll switch the type to vector so that I have a vector displacement now we need to specify a map in the slot here so I'll open up the material editor and create a Phoenix uh, ocean texture which is here in the standard textures and a Phoenix FD ocean texture so I'll give this a name and uh, the only thing that I'll change here is the wind speed and I'll set this to 5 meters and uh, that's one of the beauties of working with real sizes uh, you don't have to change any of the rest parameters they're already adjusted for us so I can now just uh, take the texture and uh, plug it into the map slot and hit OK and uh, you can see the waves in the viewport I can uh, optimize the speed of the viewport to get uh, some faster feedback when I scrub the timeline open the preview tab and uh, 
For now, I'll just uh, turn off the mesh preview. I will also turn off the splash preview so that uh, I only have the phone visible in the viewport. And uh, I will increase the detail reduction to one. Now, if I scrub the timeline, I can see that uh, it's definitely faster. And uh, let's change the material for the water. So I'll open the material editor. I will assign the material that comes with the uh, sample scene. It's a simple liquid material and uh, nothing special here. So I'll just select the simulator and uh, apply this material. Let's hit render now. And we can see the ship and the foam. But uh, to see the ocean, we'll need some environment. So I'll stop this and I'll create a V-Ray Sun. Go here to the lights, V-Ray and click the V-Ray Sun. And hit yes for the V-Ray Sky. Make this a little higher. Okay, and a bit more from the back. And I'll center the target to the world. I'll take a look from the camera this time and uh, hit render again. And here is the ocean as well as the ship and the foam. But uh, everything is too bright now and uh, that's because I don't use the exposure settings of my camera. But uh, what I'll do instead is I will decrease the intensity of the sun. So I'll come here to the intensity multiplier and set this to 0.03. And I'll also check the invisible uh, checkbox so that uh, I don't see reflections of it on the ocean surface. I will also decrease the shadow subdivisions. We don't need to have three subdivisions because uh, the shadow that the ship throws uh, over the ocean is barely visible. So we don't need to spend, uh, spend much time for sampling that shadow. So I'll set this to one and uh, I'll also open up the material editor and the environment and effects window and I'll duplicate the default V-Ray sky that we created and hit OK. I'll specify uh, intensity again of 0.03. I'll check the sun invisible here as well. So I'll hit render now again. Now it looks much better. But the ship is too dark now. So I'll create an Omni for that. So I'll press stop and switch to perspective view. Go to the lights here in the standard. I'll create an Omni. I'll center it here and I'll raise it up. A little bit more and move it more to the back. I won't enable the shadows here. I'll just set the uh, intensity to something very low, like 0 0.1, and uh, make this uh, somewhere in the blue tone. So maybe something like this. Hit OK and let's take a look from the camera again and hit render. And the ship now is illuminated better and I also like the blue tint. I'll let this uh, frame render to the end. OK, 
okay and uh, this is the rendered frame I think I can still improve uh, the look of the ship a little bit more by adding some ambient occlusion so I will create a V-Ray ambient light for the color the same color as the Omni light so I just copy this and paste it here and for the light map I'll create a V-Ray dirt map so we'll go to the maps v-ray and uh, v-ray dirt I'll call this ambient dirt and plug it here to the light map slot hit ok hit render It's a little strong actually for what we need so the phone starts uh, is burnt out and I'll stop this and I'll just set the intensity to something uh, a lot lower and uh, the light map also and let's render again that's something that I was after so I'll let again this uh, frame to render to the end Here's the rendered image and uh, the foam here that is uh, in the shadows it looks okay but uh, the one that is uh, directly lit by the sun uh, it really burns out so I will select the shaders but first I'll color code them so that I can recognize them easier and uh, that's the foam shader so I'll select it and uh, give it a light color and for the splash I'll give it a green and uh, I am color coding this uh, the same way as they are color coded in the uh, simulator so the foam is white and the splashes are green so I'll select now the foam and I'll lower the diffuse multiplier to 0.5 and I'll also switch the mode to point since uh, we are rendering it uh, from a big distance and uh, we won't be able to recognize the bubbles so this will only increase our render time and uh, that's why I'll switch to the point mode and I'll select the splashes and do the exact same thing so I'll set the diffuse to 0.5 and switch the mode to point which will uh, give us uh, better uh, rendering times another thing that I can do uh, for the uh, rendering to speed it up is I'll change the image sampler to fixed I'll leave it as this to uh, three subdivisions and I'll also turn off the image filter if I open up again the rendered image this works rendered in 2 minutes and 40 seconds and before I hit render I will uh, turn on the motion blur for these splashes so I'll set the motion blur to force on and uh, here in the point section I will uh, decrease the motion blur step to 0.2 meters uh, because 1 meter will be too much and uh, now I can hit render so from 2 minutes and uh, 40 seconds it now rendered in uh, 1 minute and 30 seconds and uh, this is a pretty good optimization and uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed this and uh, learned some new things and uh, bye